Hi, everyone, and welcome to Work in Progress, a conversation series hosted by myself, Julian Luke, and Ed Fraunheim on behalf of Great Place to Work. Work in Progress is designed for working professionals. Whether you're a people leader or an individual contributor, we want to keep it real and help you thrive during this pandemic. This week, we're covering a topic that is crucial to our business and social recovery post COVID-19. We're focusing on why listening to your employees, not just some, but all employees is critical right now. And to talk more about this, we're joined by special guests, Chadni Kazi and Nancy Sasenya, our resident data scientists here at Great Place to Work. Let's start with Chadni. Talk to me about this research. Our analysis found that the experience of five key employee groups can predict whether a company thrives, survives, or flatlines during a recession. These five employee groups are women, people of color, frontline workers, long tenured employees, and hourly male workers. Companies that created a for all workplace, especially for these five employee groups, are the same companies that during the Great Recession had financial gains while the S&P 500 suffered serious loss. Wow, that is a powerful set of findings. So what is it about these five employee groups and what should we really be listening for? For one thing, these five groups are often the first to feel the effects of a business running into trouble, such as threats of layoffs. They are also the ones that often serve the customers directly and are a great source of ideas that many companies just overlook. At thriving companies, their people experienced an inclusive, innovative, and fair culture before the Great Recession and kept that culture during the downturn. And these are the things to listen for in your employee experience surveys. Thanks for breaking it down that way, Chadney. Nancy, let me turn to you now and ask, what do we mean, what do we mean by thriving companies during the, the Great Recession? Can you share the research that backs up that claim? So we wanted to know if there was a way that we could predict whether a company would thrive during the next recession. And we studied the experiences of the five essential groups that Chadney just touched on before, during, and after the Great Recession. What we found was that organizations that provided inclusive and positive workplace cultures saw their stock performance increase 35%, while the S&P 500 had just a 9% gain. That's nearly four times the annualized returns as that is the S&P 500, really showcasing that listening to your employees is critical now more than ever. Thanks for sharing that, Nancy. It's powerful. But can you say a bit more about how those findings apply now during the COVID-19 situation? Some people might say this is a very different economic uh, downturn than the, the Great Recession of 2008. That's a great question. And while it's very true that the conditions of this financial crisis are different than that of the Great Recession, the groups of people that are being impacted are still the same. These are the same groups of people that are being labeled as essential workers now. And we need to make sure that they're having a great experience. I know many of us have friends and family members in essential positions and organizations, some of which are operating as if it's business as usual. That's the case with a family member of mine who was deemed an essential worker. His leaders have not taken any steps to ensure the health and safety of their people. And they've actually ignored repeated requests to provide gloves and face masks. This isn't just bad for him, it's bad for his organization, just like we saw in our research. But there is hope. There are great workplaces like DHL that are taking the extra step to put their people first, including implementing measures to make sure that their employees are safe while they're carrying out their essential duties, not only physically safe, but emotionally as well. For example, they're sending motivational messages to their employees through package scanning devices and offering employees virtual yoga classes, as well as facilitated meditation sessions. And another way they're showing their people that they care is by really listening to them. In the middle of this global pandemic, they surveyed their people and their people responded. They, they responded by describing their workplace by using words such as care and camaraderie, family and well-being. Because of the way that they're treating their people now in this agile and responsive way, it suggests that their business is really gonna thrive during this downturn. That's great to hear, and it's very hopeful. Let's synthesize the lessons of the research shared today by Chadney and Nancy, and it boils down to three ways to really double down on listening to thrive during this great recession. Chadney, why don't you start us off? Listen to all of your people, paying special attention to the experiences of the five groups I mentioned earlier. 
Now is the time to step up your listening and get in on those conversations your people are having. There's no better time to survey than right now and dig into those experiences. The second way is to have a mindset of inquire versus ask. It often takes more than a simple, how are you, to understand how your people are really doing, including the people in, your bell, in the bellwether groups. If you have a mindset of inquire versus ask, you can use more specific questions to really learn more. Questions like, are you concerned about anyone in your family or your friends? The third way is to demonstrate care for your colleagues. Based on what you've learned as you've listened, take action to support your, co your coworkers, especially those you may know in one of the bellwether groups. Your efforts now not only are better for people, but better for your business. You will help your organization thrive. That's the goal, and that's it for today. We definitely want to thank Chadney and Nancy for sharing their insights and thoughts, and we look forward to having them back with us on a future episode. And we want to thank you all of you for, for watching this episode of Work in Progress. Uh, again, our goal is to help us get through this challenging time together and not just get through it, but to really progress, make progress toward our mission here, a great place to work, of building a better world by creating great places to work for all everywhere. See you next time.